In Vienna, many years ago, a very strange thing happened. There was a young composer named Johann Strauss, and nobody would listen to his waltzes. Then one day, while gazing into the beautiful Blue Danube, well, why spoil a story? Let us go back to old Vienna, the place, a small music hall. The time, three quarter. <laughs> Strauss, I have loved and played your father's music for many years. I never found it to need new embellishments. If you have a disagreement with your father, leave home. But don't take it out of my orchestra. Uh, Mr. Shuretsky, before I came to play for your so-called orchestra, I wanted to write music. Now I just want to protect it. Goodbye. <laughs> Waiting here over three hours to see Mr. Hartkopf. You'll just have to wait, sir. Doesn't the name Johann Strauss mean anything to you? Not when it has a junior on the end. Hello, Willie. Anything new this week? Hello, Razy. Take a look. There are three or four that just came in. I've just got to see something new at the cafe tonight. The customers don't seem to mind, but I'm beginning to fall asleep. Don't write them the way they used to. Now, this is very good, Willie. Who wrote it? Strauss. Strauss? But it doesn't sound like Strauss. It's much freer. It has so much more excitement. Miss, if you'll just give me your name and address, I'll see that you receive a bouquet of roses every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I think I said the right thing. So you said what no music publisher has ever said. Well, I'm sorry I'm not a music publisher. I'm just a singer. Well, that's good enough. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Johann Strauss. Strauss? Oh, now, don't get all excited and flustered. I'm not the famous one. No, I'm just his son. 
Well, then, maybe I didn't say the right thing. I mean, about your father's music. Oh, I like it very much. I always sing it myself. It's just that, well, this new song of his... Well, is that's so not much... his. I wrote it. Oh, good. I was afraid I was going to lose out on the flowers. <laughs> I'm amazed I haven't heard your songs before. Well, I, I specialize in unheard of music. <laughs> now, here's a case full. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I'm no different than any other young composer. Publishers run from me. Well, doesn't being the son of such a famous father help? Oh, certainly. When they run from me, they tip their hats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this would help any, but I've been looking for some new music to sing, and you seem to have a case full. You so haven't seen my attic. <laughs> All right, Mr. Strauss. Mr. Hartkopf will see you oh, now. Oh, thank you. Look, wait here for me, will you? It'll only take a minute to be turned down. See, I just thought of something. I'm very bad at auditions. If you'd sing for me now, it'd be a big help. But I just saw the music. I don't know it. Oh, don't worry. Just sing it. Suppose I make a mistake. Hardcalf will never know the difference. That's why he's so successful. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. Hello, Mr. Hardcalf. Well, you Come in. Come in. How is your father? Fine. I'm sorry I've kept you waiting, but I've been listening to young composers all morning, and... If there's anything that's a bigger waste of time... I know you'd rather be listening to my father, but I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me. Oh, Mr. Hartkopf, I'd like you to meet Miss... You know, well, just a second, I have to meet her myself. Raisy Eberstader. Miss Eberstader. Mr. Hartkopf. How do you do? Well, now that we all know each other, Johan, can we hear the music? Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, Miss Eberstader? <laughs> Ready? I think so. <laughs> Life is a play, you set the scene, stormy and gray, bright and serene, say though you be beggar or king. needs tuning. Yeah, I know that. What about the song? Well, it, it, it has some merit, but it's like everything you write. It, it has no form. It's too free. Too much excitement. But that's what's wonderful about it. It's not restricted. Look, Mr. Hartkopf, I'm just a singer in a small cafe, but But I... I'm a very rich, successful publisher, and I say this is fine for gypsies, but for the concert halls, no. Then why not publish it? There must be thousands of gypsies in Vienna. Believe me, Johann, one musician in the family is enough. Why don't you leave this composing to your father? Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm very late for a luncheon appointment. Uh, oh, thank you for the demonstration, Miss Eberstader. You're not going to listen to him. You're not going to let him discourage you, are you? I certainly am. He's the biggest music publisher in Vienna. Well, there must be other ways besides music publishers. We could start by singing the music in my father's cafe. In fact, I'll sing it there tomorrow night. Your father owns a cafe? It's not exactly a cafe. It's a coffee house. Eberstader's. Very famous for its pastry. A coffee house? No, thank you, Miss Eberstader. Well, that's a pretty nasty attitude for an unpublished composer. Just remember that at Eberstaders, their mouths may be full, but their ears are open. Uh, you'll pardon me if I don't seem too enthusiastic, but I don't relish the thought of fighting a, an éclair for attention. You know, you're really quite arrogant, brash, and petty. 
If you don't turn out to be a genius, you're going to be in big trouble. Miss Abestater, you sing divinely, but I think your future lies in the uh, lecturing field. Mr. Strauss, there's nothing more to say except I hope you're a big success in your attic tonight. Good morning. <laughs> Freddy, 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 my boy, all Vienna owes you a deep, deep debt of gratitude. I have seen all the accomplishments of the modern age, but believe me, they're piffling trifles compared to what you have done. Piffling. Today, you have made history. You have given Vienna a dripless cream puff. I think I'm going to cry. Oh. It was really nothing, Mr. Eberstetter. I just figured if I put the cream in... Such... That's not so loud. Walls have ears, you know. This is our secret. It's little recipes like this that make Eberstetter's famous. <laughs> oh, he has golden hands. Golden hands. Mmm. Mmm. Almond paste. Never have I seen such strudels, tarts, coffee rings, Napoleons, eclairs... And cheese buns. Cheese buns. Cheese buns. You're a genius. A cheese bun. A bun full of cheese. How did you think of it? Did it come in a dream or, or did it just ooze out? What's the matter, Freddy? Aren't you happy here? Oh, I like it here, Mr. Ebbishted. I, I like the kitchen. I, I like the ovens. I, I like the hours. And, uh, and what, Freddy? What, 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 what? I love your daughter. <gasps> you love Raisy? You and Raisy in love? Raisy loved by you? But she doesn't <sighs> notice me, Mr. Eberstetter. Why, just the other day, I baked a crullo that spelled out... Raisy. How touching. How utterly touching. And what did she say? She didn't say anything. She just ate it. Oh, forgive her, Freddy. She's a wonderful girl. But she doesn't appreciate good spelling. I, I shall speak to her. Would you? I I'll, I'll tell her what a man of the world you are. What a boulevardier. What a fine mind you have. And how my business would fail without you. <laughs> In the meantime, bake, bake. A cheese bun. A bun full of cheese. Mr. Eberstater, Madame Baranska is here. The wedding cake. Freddy, the wedding cake. Here it is, Mr. Eberstater, all finished. Golden hands. He has golden hands. <laughs> I'm glad you two finally made up your minds. All I can say is that today is the happiest day of my life. But this is such a surprise, Olga. When did you two decide to do it? Mm, well, as you know, Nick and I have been seeing each other constantly for the last year. And when you go with a person that long, you really get to know what they like. <laughs> so, we realized that we didn't have a thing in common, and we decided to call the whole thing off. <laughs> <laughs> That's very smart of you, Olga, because after you're married, it's too late. <laughs> Isn't this a strange place to announce your breakup, Olga? Oh, I always come here at the end of the love affair. My romances usually start with champagne and end with pastry. I hate to say goodbye on an empty stomach. <laughs> yeah, here is the wedding cake, Madame Berenska. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, just the way I wanted it. Well, it, it comes easy after you've made five or six of them. Oh. <laughs> I know how much you wanted to marry me, because I know, uh, you know how much I am worth. In cash, I mean. And because I couldn't give you a taste of marriage, at least I can give you a taste of the wedding cake. <laughs> I've been in the throats of love many times before this. And as one who knows of love, I am really born. And those among you still in love, you can just ignore me. Those who've lost the free love, listen to my song. The ending of a love affair should leave you not in dark despair. Instead, be overjoyed. Just think of a world, a sorry man and sorry wife. You work in the hit of your life. Why cry when you've the last to sing a song? So let us raise the loving cup and those who break it up. 
does not despise as we who love and let love be. Yet drink to every happy bear who got the cake and daily share the truly joyful spirit of the end of an awful fear. Bravo, bravo, here's the plan. Ready, not so far in the Bravo, bravo, here's the plan. Ending it all. Go on, taste it. Now? Now. This is a new batch. It came right out of the oven. Do you notice anything different? Something's missing. Do you want to know what's missing? Do you want to know what's missing? I'll tell you what's missing. Not butter, not eggs, not lard. It's love that's missing. Love? How can a man bake without love? How, how, how? Razy, give him the ingredients he needs. Give him a soup sound of romance, a dash of passion, a sprinkling of amour. Then the cream puffs will be creamy again, and the eclairs will ache again. Please, Papa, I told you a thousand times I could never love Ferdy. Every time he takes me dancing, he leaves flower marks on my back. No oh, fiddle-faddle. <laughs> what do you know about him? I'm not being unreasonable. Just marry him. Oh, I can just see that wedding. Bertie will slip the coffee ring on my finger as we march down the aisle and back into the kitchen. No, thank you, darling. Razy, Razy, you're going to make Ferdie an unhappy man and me a poor one. You want to ruin my business? Hello, Razy. Oh. Yes, sir. What would you like? Coffee and cake? Oh, I've been thinking about yesterday afternoon. I, I wanted you to know how sorry I am. Oh, don't apologize. I want to remember you just as you were. Miserable and arrogant. Here, 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 here. What way is this to treat a customer? First you ruin the pastries, then you ruin the eaters. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. He's not a customer, Papa. He's a musician. Of course. A musician? Give him a broken cookie and get him out of here. A musician. Ooh. Well, how long is this going to go? What would you like me to do? Get out of my hands and knees and beg your forgiveness? Oh, don't be so dramatic. I think if you just cried a little, it would do. I've got a better idea. I'll kill myself, but before I die, I'll leave a note. Goodbye, cruel world. Goodbye, Razy. Please sing my song at the coffee house. All right, all right, I'll sing your song. <laughs> Razy. After you've killed yourself. Ooh, if that's the way it's going to be, maybe I better go. If you go, go that way. That's where the piano is. <laughs> this is fun. Sort of like a debut. Yours and Ferdy's. Ferdy's? His new cheese bun comes out today, too. <laughs> Artist's life. Well, that's one you didn't get back yesterday. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> 
Junior. <laughs> well, I'm an old man of Charles Anderson. And so Collington. Look at that smile. He's an extremely good-looking composer. Oh, Excuse me, I must go and compliment him. Oh, Razie, it was wonderful. I think you're a success, Mr. Strauss. A modest one, perhaps, but at least it's a start. I'd like to celebrate this moment with you. Let's order some champagne. Make it coffee. Remember, you're just a success at Eberstaters. You've got a long way to go. <laughs> oh, Mr. Strauss, I just can't tell you what your music did for me. I could hardly take my eyes off it. Uh, Johan, this is Madame Baranska, one of Eberstaters' oldest customers. Well, how do you do? I'm glad my music touched you so. I think with the proper guidance, you can go very far. Oh, you're very kind, especially for not comparing me with my father. <laughs> there is hardly any comparison. You must be at least 30 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you were such an ardent music lover, Madame Baranska. I had no idea either, but I learned hard. <laughs> I should like to discuss your music more with you, Mr. Strauss. Why, I'd be delighted. Planning to start a conservatory. Uh, by the way, I am giving a little party tomorrow evening. All the cafe owners, uh, critics and mu music publishers will be there. Will you come? Why, certainly. I'd love to. Which music publishers? I don't know yet. I just thought of the party. Oh? Oh. But it will be a wonderful opportunity to have your music heard. And could Miss Eberstater sing? Why not? See you tomorrow evening at nine, Mr. Strauss. And don't forget, Miss Eberstedt, the musicians get their attend. Goodbye. Remarkable how she still gets around. <laughs> Come on, Rizzi. I'll buy you some coffee. I think now I need champagne. <laughs> gentlemen, the prima ballerina of the Vienna Opera Company, Mia Slavenska.
to think it would happen to me. Me, Hans Eberstetter, catering at Madame Baranskos. Imagine feeding the biggest mouths in Vienna. Tonight, Ferdy, you have outdone yourself. Oh, I, I tried, Mr. Eberstetter. As soon as you assured me that everything was all right with Razy, I was inspired. Yeah. Tell me, what did she say when you told her how much I cared for her? What did she say? What did she say? Well, uh, what could she say? She didn't say anything. Uh, her, her, her eyes told me everything. What did her eyes say? Uh, what did her eyes say? Well, what could her eyes say? Uh, she looked at me, and I could tell what was in her heart. What was in her heart? Her heart was in her heart. Do I have to tell you everything? Haven't you any imagination? Is that what Razy feels about me? Now, if, if I were you, I'd move right in for the kill. Remember, he who woos wins. He who doesn't woo, wooses. Uh, save the guests. <laughs> Crowded dance floor. I don't think I'll get to meet many critics and publishers this way. Critics later. Which one's first? <laughs> oh, it's a fabulous party. I hope they like my music. No, don't worry, they like it. This affair cost a fortune. Will you excuse me? I, I'm, I'm getting awfully nervous. I don't know what to start with tonight. Razy song or the Gavada Mazurka? What do you think? Always for blue. <laughs> Feel the grape on the vine. I'm just itching to clutch. I can see that no trespassing sign. But my darling, you're much.
car, and I just tell you, came to tell you it's time to play. But I see you found that out. How the time flies. Well, I go and make the announcement, and you two stay here and have a nice fight. Well, good luck, Johan. Thanks to Madame Baranska. You may be a big success tonight. Yeah, she's paying an awful lot for this. I think we all are. <laughs> Dear friends, I have asked you to come here tonight to hear an outstanding young composer, Mr. Johann Strauss, Jr. Thank you. Thank you. We have prepared for tonight's presentation one of my songs, which will be sung for you by a talented young singer, Miss Razi Eberstede. Oh. Congratulate you. 
Uh, be polite, dear. Mr. Dumeier owns the finest cafe in Vienna. Yes, I know. That's where my father had his greatest success. <sighs> and this is where you shall have yours. Mr. Dumeier and I have already discussed the terms. Will we have a drink on it? Wonderful. <laughs> to the chef. She's beautiful. Get out of here. Crazy. I just want to talk to you. Keep your mouth closed if you don't want it filled with mocha cream. Well, go ahead and shoot. But before you do, I want to tell you that you're being very silly. How is Madame Baranska this morning? Does she know that her great protege is in the kitchen talking to the help? <laughs> oh. My dear Miss Ebbishtader, I don't know if your father ever told you the facts of life, but it's time you learned them. It is a law of nature that if a young composer wants to get ahead, he should be very nice to people who can help him. It is also an undisputed scientific fact that people should try and, and understand that young composers act this way out of necessity, even though they are much fonder of other people. That may be the fact of life for young composers, but for birds, bees, and singers, it's different. Uh, Miss Eberstater, you have a very unscientific mind. Do I make myself clear? Not in the least. Mm -hmm. Let's have a friendly understanding. Quite simply, let's be friends. Grown up people with a friendly understanding. That if they quarrel, they'll be quick to make amends. It's very nice to have a friend to talk with and walk with. And in hand, and it lands spice to any friendly understanding. Someday it may turn to something grand. Oh, Razy, you've got to believe me. Right now, one of the most important things in my life is, is music. With my father's lack of faith in me, it, well, it's almost impossible even to be heard. But with Madame Baranska's help, maybe I've got a chance, Razy. I'm explaining this to you because you mean so much to me. And I, I liked it much better the way you explained it before. It's very nice to have a friend to talk with And walk with Hand in hand And it lends spice to any friendly understanding To think that someday it may turn to some Say it. Try, your heart. Well, I'd never ask this of any other girl. Go on. Well, Razie, would would you come to Durmeyer's with me for my first rehearsal? Durmeyer! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
one and two and one, two, hold. Gentlemen, music is like a beautiful woman. She has many moods. Go along with her mood, flow along with her mood. She's demanding understanding. You must help her express what she wants to express. Is it sadness? Is it longing? Or is it your joy? Perhaps it's none of these things. Perhaps she just wants to flirt with you or chat about nothing simply because it's spring. Then the conversation must be kept light and frothy. Lovely night, perfect view, a delightful party too. Oh, you're getting along beautifully. Look, she's giving you one of her best smiles. Compliments, they're all right, but you must keep them light. What a charming gown, such a charming gown, so becoming such. Parisian flair, you know exactly what to wear. She smiles. Thank you. Now you're getting to be old friends. You ask her if she would like a glass of wine. She accepts, and you drink a toast to one another. Suddenly you realize the orchestra is playing a waltz. You want to dance with each other more than anything else in the world. You say it's heaven to dance with you. She answers, and I adore it too. Both of you go, and you feel so fine. Can this romance be confused with wine? Then something may remind her of a poignant memory. Suddenly the world emotion is like a little child. Now comes the real test. Can you cheer her up? Which is stronger, the memory or you? You'll need the right words. What do you say? What can you say? The thing is some gossip. Her tears are falling fast. Oh, come on now. Well, tell a joke, any joke. You must have told it well. Her laughter rings out to reward you. Your empty arms reach out to hold the sweet of boundless beauty. And then, and then she's in your arms at last. Gentlemen, I salute you. Uh, will you look over the waltz and see, please? Oh, I beg your pardon. Have you seen a, a pretty young girl? No, I don't suppose you could from down there. Sorry. Raised you? I had a feeling you'd come. I, I kept looking for you. I just came to return this music. I thought you might need it. No. Oh, well, thank you. The, the rehearsal is going very well. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, um, uh, would you like to stay and hear the rest of it? You asked me that the last time when I was least expecting it. Oh, please. Uh, well, I'd like it very much. I'm terribly busy, I oh, promise. Th yeah, it can wait, it can wait. Yeah, come on, sit down, huh? Uh, all right. I suppose I do have an interest in you. Musically, that is. Oh, of course, of course. Now, you sit down right here, and, and after the rehearsal, we'll talk. <laughs> Gentlemen, we shall resume in five minutes. Hello, Father. Good afternoon, Johann. I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't know you had this much interest in my work. I'm always interested in music by Strauss. <laughs> oh, Father, uh, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, uh, Miss Eberstader, my father. I'm very pleased to meet you, Miss Eberstader. 
I gather you're an admirer of my son's music. Yes, I think he has a wonderful future. Is that a professional opinion? Or are you just an enthusiastic friend? Oh, I sing at Eberstater's Coffee House. Eberstater's Coffee House. Well, then, we can speak as one experienced musician to another. I'm afraid, miss, I can't share your enthusiasm for my son's music. In my opinion... Father, if this is going to turn out to be another lecture, I'm, I'm very busy with the rehearsal. Oh, you needn't worry. There'll be no lecture. And I might add, no rehearsal. What do you mean? Johann, I could try and save your feelings, but I'll be blunt. I think this engagement would be disastrous for you. Well, evidently, Mr. Dumeyer doesn't share your opinion. Fortunately, Mr. Dumeyer is a better businessman than he is a music critic. He realizes it is much more profitable to give up a young Strauss for an old Strauss. What did you tell Dumeyer? Quite simply. That if he doesn't cancel this engagement, I, who could always fill his cafe, will never play here again. I can't believe it. You've never gone this far to stop me. You've never gone this far to warrant it. I'll speak to Dumeyer. Or have you forbidden him to speak to me, too? You can understand, miss, how difficult it is to be a father. To be an ordinary father is difficult, Mr. Strauss. To be a jealous one is intolerable. Hmm. That is another parental problem. Explaining about one child to another child. It was nice meeting you. Good afternoon, Miss Avisley. Mr. Strauss. When a woman loves a man Whatever occurs, clouded dream or luckless plan, these troubles are hers. Writers say when things look lovely, grim, it's just a to discover, because this one is going to remain undiscovered for some time. Something's wrong. I'll speak to Dormaya. You're a little late for that. Johann's father has already spoken to him. The great man has seen to it that Johann's debut is off. And there's nothing you can do about it. Perhaps not. But it might be very pleasant consoling him. I think it would be better if Johann were left alone for a little while. 
He's had a lot of trouble with older people lately. You know, actually, I'm much too rich to talk to you. But I don't want you to worry a minute about Johannes Carwell. If they won't hear him in Vienna, then they will listen in Budapest. Budapest? That's my home. I'm ridiculously influential there. I'll arrange your hands with you, and I can assure you that good or bad, he'll be a smashing success. How generous of you, Madam Baranska. I'm sure that with your patient guidance, in no time at all, Johan could give up music entirely. Oh, thank you, my dear. That's an excellent idea. Perhaps I mention it to him in Budapest. I think he'll stay in Vienna. <laughs> I can still hear the music. Isn't there any place in Vienna one can go without listening to waltzes? What did you drag me out here for anyway? I should be back at the coffee house. I must relieve Ferdy at the coffee grinder. You know, I've been thinking a lot about Ferdy these last few days. You have? I was thinking he deserves more than just a small coffee house with a handful of people to enjoy his talents. Papa, you have to expand. You mean, uh... Bigger pastry? Bigger Eberstaters. Rebuild it. Start fresh. We'll have the biggest and best cafe in Vienna. <laughs> Bigger than Dumeier's. Dumeier's? Oh, that's a big place. Too many people to bake for. Why, Ferdy's fingers would curl up and fall off. Nah, it couldn't be done. It could, if he had someone beside him he cared for. Crazy. Do you mean it? Now, now remember, I'm not forcing you. But I promise you'll be very, very happy. Then you'll do it? Well, I don't know. It means a lot of money. We must find a new location, build a dance floor, hire a new orchestra, get a big conductor. You... Uh-huh. Now I see why you're doing it. Forget it. It's out. But Papa Johan is wonderful, and together with Bertie, it's got to be a success. No. Do you mean... You marry Ferdy and have me build this place just to give Strauss an opportunity? Well, let's see what we got here. Now, if I say no, 
you're unhappy, Strauss is unhappy, Ferdy is unhappy. If I say yes, Strauss is happy, Ferdy is happy, I'm happy, but you're unhappy. Well, that's not so bad. Only one person unhappy. <laughs> ah, but it's the wrong person. Now, if, if I build a place and you don't marry Ferdy, then you're happy, Strauss is happy, but Ferdy and I are unhappy. So I tell you what I'll do. I'll build the place, it'll probably fail, then everybody will be unhappy, and maybe you'll think of Ferdy again. Oh, Papa. Oh, I've got to go tell Johan. Isn't it wonderful? No, he won't have to go to Budapest. <laughs> it's wonderful for anybody not to go to Budapest. <laughs> gotta get out of this park. I can't stand that music. Born to be in me, through a quake of fate, I find that I'm lacking a Viennese trait. As a Viennese, I've no major faults, except that I abominate. I simply hate the walls. Attending a party, my manner is very slick, romantic, or arty. Madame, you may have your pick, but my dancing halts at a three-quarter wall. <laughs> it goes against the grain, and through my head it breaks. Give me two, four, or four, four, even six and seven, eight. Here it goes again. Um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa, um, pa. Isn't it tedious? I just can't stand the opera house. The opera house is filled with flowers. All sopranos, ah, 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 sighing softly, ah, 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 when they're living, ha, 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 when they're dying, ha, 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 blood and slaughter, ha, 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 in three quarter, ha, 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 Singing all those waltzes, no wonder they die, cause so do I. It may be great, it may have smiles, but I hate the... I gotta get out of here. <laughs> new cafe that Eberstater has built. It's the best one in Vienna. That's all very well for Eberstater, but we'd better get ourselves some customers. Right. Uh, cab. Hansel. Right. Cab. Cabby. Cab. Right. Come and take a ride in a hansom, sitting side by side in a hansom. You can treat your lady to a long discourse on the pale yellow moon and the charm of the tooth. You can tip me to croon to the horse. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, old mare. Got a girl that a boy wants to kiss back there. She says no. Let's go once again around the park. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, my friend. She's a bright looking girl, but she won't unbend. So until. She will once again around the park. Keep it up, flip flop. Don't stop. You've been doing this every night. And you know so well it takes a spell till everything turns out right. Keep it up, young man. She can be the stubbornest kind of you. But she give in sure if she thinks you're growing kind of cool. Yes, that proves the rule. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, old mare. Got a girl and a boy in a clinch back there. Between us two, they do even better in the dark. So once again around the park. Once again around the park. Everybody is on.
unhappy. Even the waiters, the new Eberstaders, 50,000 kronen, and tomorrow it'll be a new livery stable. What happened? 9.30 and nobody here. Where are all the customers? Where, where, where? I'll tell you where they are. They're all sitting and waiting at the old Eberstaders. But we got an orchestra and music. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> now we can all dance to the poor house. I never baked so many pies. Well, who told you to bake so much? All of a sudden, you get a big head and want to feed the world. No more butter this month. Use lard. Well, why aren't you conducting? At least you can keep my waiters from going crazy. No, it's no use, Mr. Eberstater. I don't think we'll have any more customers here tonight. Well, fine. Then we can all relax and have dinner. <laughs> Would everybody like a whole roast beef? <laughs> what do you mean, no more customers? They're all over at the opera house, Papa. It seems my father chose tonight to give a special concert. Good. It's always nice to know the reason when you're wiped out. <laughs> why tonight? Didn't he know we were opening tonight? That's why, Mr. Eberstater. You mean your own father would do this to you? Why am I so shocked? Look what my own daughter did to me. If there's anything that I can do... Uh, would you like to order dinner for 326? <laughs> I'm going into the kitchen and grind myself into a frickadellon. Some debut. Five people. All you need is one. Will you dance with me, Johan? It's, it's no use, really. I can't fight him anymore. Oh, but you have to, Johanna. or he'll smother you forever. You know, the only good thing that came out of this whole mess was you. And my darling, your march too close to me. Just a touch too close to me. I'd resist you if you'd give me half a chance. But when I'm so close to you, don't expect me to dance. You know this fancy protocol is not for me. I want all you got for me. Once I kiss you, you take caution to last. You've been warned, my sweet. Prepare to meet your fate. You're the grape on the vine. I'm just itching to clutch. And I like you being close to me too Thank you, Miss. Wonderful performance. Oh, oh, I Oh, it's marvelous. Marvelous, Mr. Strauss. Simply marvelous. And now you won't forget the party tonight. I'll try to be there. Thank you very <laughs> much. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, Miss Eberstein. You flatter me. How did you like the concert? I didn't hear it. I was at another concert with a much smaller audience. But I'm sure you know all about that. I'm sorry about tonight. This concert came up very suddenly. Yes, just as soon as the posters were up for Johann's debut. Miss Eberstetter, I think you confuse my son's talent for his attractiveness. Mr. Strauss, I think your envy confuses your sense of reason. I'm sure you see in Johann a talent much greater than your own. And if your aim was to stifle it, you've been very successful. You've given your son a lot to remember. You can always look back and know that he owes his failure to you. I just don't understand you. 
What kind of a jealous desire is it that makes you want to drive him into the ground? Is it a wonderful feeling to stand on a podium and know you're receiving the applause you owe your own son? I thought you might like to have this music. It's probably the last he'll ever write. I don't know anything about music, but that young man, what's his name? Uh, Strauss. It's amazing. I've never heard such beautiful melodies. What do you think, Olga? Always were red. Oh, Wasn't the music Sorry. wonderful, Mr. Heberstadt? I'll let you in on a little secret, Freddy. I didn't hear the music. I stuffed cigars in my ears. <laughs> ah, Madame Baranska, isn't it grand, simply grand? I suppose you've heard he's appearing exclusively in my cafe. Oh, well, why not? After all, you are his discoverer. <laughs> a discoverer? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. I'm a discoverer. I'm a discoverer and I never knew it. <laughs> I'm an undiscovered discoverer. <laughs> <laughs> it was charming. Uh, probably I'll be seeing you for one of my special little cakes in another four weeks. <laughs> Make it five. <laughs> Give my best to your daughter and your future son-in-law. What does she mean, future son-in-law? Are Raisie and Strauss going to get married? What about me? You fool, don't you see Raisie's motive? She's trying to make you jealous. Really? Notice during the wedding how much she looks at you. Uh, come on. <laughs>
This has been a Max Liebman production brought to you live from New York. This is Don Pardo speaking. <laughs>